Savage Hunter, Aliens vs. Predator, with awesome new Predators. Clan Leader attacks with whipping dreadlocks. And Stalker, glowing in the dark, fires his spear. Suddenly, flipping up his attack spikes, the wild boar alien charges. And the ferocious mother alien in her monstrous hive traps Spike Tail, then covers him in ooze. Ooze! Who will survive? Aliens vs. Predator. Queen High playset comes with mother alien figure and ooze. Other figures sold separately. Now you can be as clever as Kevin with Tiger's new Talkboy tape recorder. Stop drooling on me! Stop drooling on me! It even has speed control. Hi kids, we're home early. Hi kids, we're home early. Tiger's new Talkboy tape recorder comes with audio cassette. Now have more Home Alone fun with Tiger's new Home Alone 2 handheld game. Hey, what is going on? It's your retro arcade friend, Brooklyn Menace, coming to you with another video. The II Arcade just announced its amazing new cabinet for 2022, but so far, they haven't announced any new games, and people are asking, what games are they going to bring to the table in 2022? Well, I've put together a list, 10 games that I would love to play on my II Arcade. So, Without keeping you waiting, and in no particular order, let's check them out. Rastin Saga Episode 3 is an arcade beat em up game released by Taito in 1991. It is a weapons based brawler similar to Sega's Golden Axe. Its main feature was the use of dual screens to depict the action. It was launched in Japanese arcades only and never was released as an arcade game in North America. iArcade will launch the arcade authentic version of Warrior Blade. To crush your enemies! See them driven before you, and they hear a lamentation of their women. That is good. That is good. This is Papa Brad. I'm going to talk about Dewey, the ninja character in Rastan 3, Warrior's Blade. No. Dewey is a ninja. He's very fast, doesn't have a lot of power, but he does have daggers, and he has ninja swords. As you go through the game, you get to see all kinds of cool things as you play as Dewey. Hey look, what's that skull? Oh no, it's a monster! Get him! Check out this dude. 
He's going to turn into a sea monster. This is some crazy stuff. This game is filled with fantasy elements. If you like fantasy adventure, this game is for you. Uh, you like uh, snake plant monsters? This game's got them in droves. How about crazy horseback battles? I love uh, this game. Just kept surprising me with all the different places it was taking me. One minute I'm on a horse, I'm jumping over logs, I'm fighting hand to hand. Next minute, this guy could be in Game of Thrones, sitting on the king's throne. And before you know it, you got the Ray Harry house and skeletons popping up, and you're in a full-on skeleton battle. Then you're flying on a dragon. I mean, this game just throws uh, theme after theme of high fantasy at you. Very fun game. Highly recommend this one. How about this one? Check out this crazy fire skull monster. And another dragon. Just, you know, falling down the hill, you know. You gotta keep playing. Some wizards. A wizard. That frightens you. You're afraid of magic. And you will have to deal with it. What good is a sword against sorcery? This game got a lot of wizards that you kill. Check out that. How cool is that effect? The tide rolling in with the sea monsters in it. I mean, this game is just filled with all kinds of fantasy images. Reminds me of um, the best um, Conan comic book. Filled with high fantasy art and craziness. Definitely check this game out and check out Dewey. He's a cool ninja. Crom. I've never prayed to you before. I have no tongue for it. So, what did I think of Warrior Blade Rastin Saga Episode 3 for the Eye Arcade? I'd say it's a really solid beat em up. If you like this genre, you're probably going to like this game. Um, I will remind you that the game will be presented in the letterbox ratio, so if that bothers you, that's one thing to consider. Welcome everybody to Game Talk, where I go over different IIRK games that I might find interesting. Now, I'm going through the list of games that I can get. The one that caught my eye was Night Slashers. Night Slashers is $9.99. You catch it on sale sometimes. And it's a game that came out in 1993 in the arcades by Data East. This game plays just like Streets of Rage, Double Dragon games like that. But what caught my eye about it, it's got zombies and monsters in it. It's got crazy looking things. So we're going to start up in this game, see what it's hitting for. I'm going to tell you what I think. Then we got Attack Jump Special. Easy enough. Data East. Data East makes a lot of good games. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay. Looks like there's some stuff going down. Oh, what, what is this? This man got cybernetic arms. Okay, I got to figure out my buttons just like that. Just like the Neo Geo games. I think I could work with this. I might want that character right there. Yeah, him. I want Jake. American Monster Hunter, huh? Got them arms like Jax from Mortal Kombat. Okay, they about to run up in some zombies. All right, let me see. Yeah, well, I want Jake. There he is. Oh, he's ready. You heard that? The man Jake is ready. Got his Captain America colors on, all right. Destroy all zombies. Sounds easy enough. <laughs> that came in like the A-team. Busting down walls, running over zombies. All right, let's check out this gameplay. He done ripped off the jacket. He's ready. Knocking out zombies, pop, pop, pop. They don't want the smoke. The 
this game looks good. The graphics are incredible for its time. I never caught this in the arcade myself, but I wish I did. Zombies off the elevator, they're no match for my arms. Come on now. It's like Colossus. Ha ha ha, they don't want it. Got some money and stuff, I'll take that. Come on, let's fight. Just smush them like fruit. Ha ha, body slam, I like it. Oh, I don't like that. You got zombies rolling all off the shelves and stuff. But it's okay. Cause this man is strong. He just knocks him out. Punch, punch, bam. Oh, no, it's okay. All right, we back up in it. Come on, zombies. Pop, pop, pop. Pop, pop, pop. That's it. This game is easy. I like it. Don't pick that up. That hot dog don't look fresh. We're in the middle of the sewers or wherever we at. That hot dog's got some steak lines coming from it. He doesn't want to smoke. Come on, let's fight. Beat you without the need of that. Don't pick up that hot dog. Don't do it. Yeah. Take that beat. Come on, get up this fight. Oh, you got some friends with you. It's all right. Don't eat that hot dog. Don't do it. Come on, let's fight. Gosh darn it, I don't eat the hot dog. I had to smash you up. Bro. What we got here? Oh, we got another boss. Okay. Got some Frankenstein, man. You want to fight with me? Let's fight. I got some sobbing in the car. I'm not worried about this. You see how they talk and smack with the smack they say it ain't the stuff that's on the screen. All right, you see, folks, I got one hand. I'm a beat him with one hand. Come on, let's fight. How, how does he got electric powers? He related to block or something. Come on, let's fight. Don't walk over to me on that spot. I'm going to knock you out. We gonna get that stuff in. Come on, let's fight. I'm back. Oh yeah. Oh, that little combo piece. You're almost done. Colossus style. You're done. You're out of here. One more for the road, bro. I like it. This game's all right. I think I'm about to play this at another time. I like it. So, folks, with that said, I, I think I really like this game. I've been into Streets of Rage and Double Dragon, you know, since I was a little kid. And this is something I can mess with. So, folks, you want to spend some money? You want to buy some IRK games? Come try this game out. Thanks for watching. So today we're going to jump into a game that I got on the IRK they just released the other week. Elevator Action Returns. I'm just waiting for it to start it up. I gotta wait a moment. Come on now. Alright, here we go. 
I released my title in 1995. This game is the second in a series of games. We're going to check this out. Looks kind of fun. Okay. Graphics look all right. Got three badass people right here. Okay. Elevator action returns. Let's get in it. Pick my car. We got Cart, Eddie, and Jed. What is up with these weird names? John the Taff. Yep. Let's do it with him. He's strong. He's ready to fight. I gotta get the bombs at sea. It ain't no thing. You gonna stop me up at the top. Alright, I'm ready. There's another elevator. Okay, bullets work. Damn it. I don't miss the elevator. I like how I can see what's coming up though. This looks crazy. Imagine this. This game looks kind of like they got a dog, okay. They running squad deep down there, okay. They gonna get shot. Caution, what? I gotta wait for the elevator. All right, let's get it. Pow, pow. They mess with me. Come on. Pow. They don't want the smoke. Hold up. Let me go up in here. Diffuse this bomb. I like it. Why is it so messed up? Crush the old order, huh? Let's shoot some. <laughs> That's messed up, you shoot an animal. Shoot him right dead to rice. This man is a beast. <laughs> he then came out and got sniped. What a way to die. This shit is messed up. <laughs> he fell off the thing. Oh my goodness, this game is crazy. Oh my god, yo. You done shot me in the back. Shoot somebody in the toe and they die. Sorry, Puffin up. You had to go. There it is. What's happening? Oh, shit. Look at that. The big boss, man, you tried to mess me up. It's all right. Taking people out my way left and right. What made these people decide? Oh, they just want to risk their life and get shot real quick. They say, right. Ha! One shot. I like that. One shot. Take them out. There it is. This shit is funny. Caution for what? What, I'm taking too long. This ain't good enough for you. I gotta defuse the bombs. All these people gonna die anyway. Let them blow it up. Why is half of these people bald headed and half naked? Must be hot in here. AC must not work. People ain't got no shirt. Everybody ain't got no shirt on anybody. I have a shirt over their shirt, but they got their chest out and everything. For what? Y'all think you're tough? Yo, ain't shit. All right, I'm out of here. Where's my grind at? Let's get up out of here. And they are just... Yo, these, these are a bunch of criminals in their own right. Oh, we're at the airport. Airport got a whole bunch of criminals just walking around. Man, I like this. What, they couldn't drop me out of the front? Had to break through the window and shit. They're dead. Oh, I yo. We are burning people alive. This isn't even fair. Look at this. Let's set this whole place in place. You missed me. Now you're dead. Burn alive. Move out of my way. These robots are done. All right, what we got here? Let's blow it all up. I step on it. Oh, you got rocket men? You're going to die by rockets, rocket men. Come on and burn alive. Burn alive. There it is. Come on, I'm shooting rocket yet. After the first 10 people die, why is y'all gonna keep on coming on with it? Everybody's dead, everybody wants a bullet. You get a bullet, you get a bullet. Who wants a bullet? You get a bullet too. Hey, why is y'all well just keep on flying and fly away? You didn't see everybody. You didn't graduate with being a villain. In villain school, they all dead. Just walk away. How many people are gonna take out? We got 100 people. Last one, you're done. Silly dog, running away with my bullets, huh? This big old plow, ah, look at this. I can see in the plane. Oh, y'all think y'all gonna ambush me? I got bullets for everybody. Bullets all is here. I got unlimited gun, unlimited bullets. And I got plenty of y'all that's gonna get it. Walk into my gun, how about that? This is, this is fun, I gotta say. Elevator action returns. I never played the first one, but I don't need to. This game is fun already. 
good ass sequel. I like it. Oh, we got one. Now. Oh, you trying to take me out of that? What a sicko. But he's done. Look at this. Now they want me to jump. I got it. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. I done took out a hundred people with that gun in the past two minutes. And an elevator takes me out. I really enjoyed this game. It's worth the purchase. And this thing had online with two people. That's a win-win. Bring it out, I arcade. Let's get it. All right, folks. This is winning my book. We're going to try another game later on. Thanks for watching. Hi, I Arcadians. This is Brad O'Connell, and I'm just here to do a quick review of the game Dark Seal 2 for the II Arcade. Let me tell you a little bit about this game. It's made by Data East. It was made in 1992. Sequel to Dark Seal, which is also on II Arcade. Um, you're gonna love this game. If you like games like Golden Axe, if you like Dungeons and Dragons, this game is for you. Let me put in some coins, let's point it up. Went under the name Wizard Fire as well. Um, Data East game, you can see 1992 on this beautiful IRK Dragon's Lair cabinet with 1.21 gigawatts of pure power. Okay, and we're ready. Let us let me just show a little bit of the gameplay. Um, if you're familiar with the Dungeons and Dragons games from Capcom or Golden Axe, um, you're gonna feel right at home in this game. This game is uh, really familiar. To start off, you got five different kinds of characters you can choose, there's a lot of variations. Um, The, uh, the wizard. Okay. This game is uh, must have came out when uh, the uh, CD sounds were coming out because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of speech and stuff in it. Great sound. Got these great 1992 Dungeons and Dragons kind of uh, cutscenes with the speech. I think it's awesome. If you're into fantasy, this game is a win. Let's skip this. It's very fun to watch them. Okay, and you have this perspective like this. Of course, I'm playing with one hand. This is very difficult to do. I am not a YouTuber. But you basically you have attacks. The entire game is a fantasy theme. And it's just so good. Since we're, you know, talking about how I, I arcade, you know, they, they, there's other games that they could go after. And, and there's not, there's sometimes there's some real diamonds in the rough that most people have never heard of or never played, you know, obviously. Well, and there is one on the I arcade that we've been talking about the last couple of episodes. And we got a game spotlight on it today. And as a beat em up fan, guys, like if you have the I arcade and you don't have this beat 'em up on your cab, you're like, go buy it. Like as soon what as it's it? here. What you got? I, I got it for you. Here, you you got it. Taste game spotlight. We're looking at a Technos Japan release. The great, unheard of, unheralded beat 'em up Shadow Force released in 1993. And what's cool about this game is it actually utilizes all six buttons. Yes, a beat em up that uses six buttons. And here's the characters what? guy. He's like a ninja. Tenju, he's like the strong guy character. Coyote, he's like a werewolf kind of dude. He's awesome. I love Coyote. And then we have. 
Lunette, and she's the girl ninja character. She's my second favorite. And here's a little look at the ninja guy, Kai, and some of his actions. And like I said, this game utilizes all six buttons, which is really cool for a beat-em-up. And so you can throw in all kinds of different combinations and block and, you know, so the, just the diversity of moves that this game offers is really, really cool. As we take a look at Kai here, kicking some butt. And here's uh, his special move. Of course, you know, you got to have a special move you pull off. And then here is a look at Coyote. You know, again, he's my personal favorite character in the game. When I saw him as a playable character, like a werewolf looking dude, I was like, this is awesome. You know, it's definitely different than most traditional beat em ups. And here's his special move. And he does a lot of flips and flying around. And I love when he picks you up and just beats him with him. Cool. And then here's the female ninja. She's my second favorite character. She's got the two swords, and she can jump around real fast, and she's pretty agile, obviously. But uh, she's definitely a fun character to be as well. I definitely recommend giving her a go. And then here's a look at her special moves. You know, some of her more advanced movesets. Here it is. How Ooh, much is it, Mikey J? And then here's the strong guy. He's actually my least favorite of the I don't the remember. I bought it on sale. I, uh, I wouldn't recommend playing as him personally. Uh, unless this game does end up with four players online, then someone's going to have to be old Tenju. But for me personally, I just I had a hard time uh, with his boom set. He was just so slow and... I just had a hard time, like you can see, the, the guy's kind of giving it to me back here. But, you know, I eventually uh, was able to get him. And here's a look at his special move. And, and he does have some good pile drives and body slams and stuff. So, I mean, he, I'm not saying he's not a good character. He's just, he's my least favorite of the bunch. And then you can get to kind of choose your own adventure with the different stages, which is cool when uh, games give you this option. And what makes this game special is you can actually transform into the enemies and become any one of the enemies other than the boss characters at any time. So you can even play as the bad guys and see how these characters work out, which is a really cool feature in this game. And speaking of which, this game actually features a fight stage bonus stage in between each level and you have to pick your regular character and a shadow character that you can turn into and you fight it out like a straight up fighting game and you need combos and stuff and you see transforming back into the other character uh, and and so it's just this is just a really cool dynamic and feature and thought that was put into this this beat-em-up game and it really is one of the best beat-em-ups I have ever played because of of all these versatility of stuff and the cool bad guys you can uh, boss fights you got Lucifer yes that's right Lucifer himself is one of the big baddies that you're gonna fight in this game I mean like seriously I mean that's that's pretty cool that they, they throw the devil himself in as one of the bad guys so I mean again it's just a really cool game and like all beat em ups from the early 90s, late 80s, and early 90s, you gotta have an alien stage full on with a face hugger you gotta kill. As well as like a xenomorph kind of ripoff called Bio Mother instead of the Alien Queen. But yeah, same kind of thing. But to win the game, you actually have to do one final fight, you know, boss battle, like a fighting game style against Mars. Uh, the Roman god Mars, which is pretty pretty awesome. So if you want to beat the game, you actually have to get good at these one-on-one -on -one battles, which is pretty cool that they brought that feature in, giving it a fight game feel even. And if you're lucky enough to do it, you can see the end screen in all its glory. So yeah, Shadow Force. Check it out now on the iArcade. Favorite pet. Yes. So what's that make me? Fish sticks? Oh, are you hungry? Oh, no, 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 no. By all means, feed it. Play till your heart's content. Look, Goldie. I took good care of her, and she changed again. Change? 
How about changing some water here? Katie, your bus is here. So Tamagotchi can pause. I can pause too. You want to see that again? Hatch a Tamagotchi, the one and only from Bandai, each sold separately. Arabian Magic is a side scrolling hack and slash game developed and released by Taito for arcades in 1992. Arabian Magic has seven different stages, each one with powerful guardians awaiting the player at the end of each level. You get to choose from four different playable characters Prince Rasid, Princess Lisa, Simbad, or Afshal. The game is set in the mythical world of the Arabian Nights. Some time ago, the Evil One plagued a peaceful kingdom in order to save a king who by sorcery has been changed into a monkey. A group of heroes must find the jewel of seven colors and release the evil hex from the king. However, formidable monsters are waiting along their path. This game is a tribute to me to the Sinbad movies of Ray Harryhausen. You can see it in the boss designs of this game. Four player characters have the ability to summon a genie which can attack your enemies with powerful blows. The boss battles in my opinion are one of the best parts of this game. If you beat a genie at the end of the level, you can capture them in a magic lamp and you can use them against your enemies down the road. There are many traps which will stand in your way to reach the end of this game. Each level is littered with vases and wooden chests, which when broken, reveal treasure items and power-ups. The game has a slight RPG element, in that stats such as life can be raised. The boss of this level reminds me of The Golden Voyage of Sinbad, the 1974 movie, with the great Ray Harryhausen monsters. Check this out and see how similar it is. Afshal. level has you fighting the great rock in an aerial battle on board a magic flying carpet. This game is filled with imagination and great creatures for you to battle. I switched to Princess Lisa. She has excellent reach with her magical scarf. She also has a special spinning move performed by tapping forward twice on the joystick. She is a fast character, but suffers defensively. Sinbad is a powerful character with a very useful flaming sword attack done by holding the attack button, then releasing. The imagination in this game is really great too, because at one point you're shrunk into a really small size as you fight being miniaturized. You also fight in another part against wizards that have doppelgangers that match the player characters of the game. The coolest part is you can save all these boss battles up and use them at the end to unleash fury on the final enemy. 
In this part, you do a battle on board a burning pirate ship. And you just take on these two kung fu guys. After this, you're treated to another great boss battle. The game is just full of surprises. After this battle, you continue on board the pirate ship. Rain comes and lets the fire go down. Then at the end of the level, you face a sea monster. Unleash the Kraken! next level features a fantastic skeleton battle. The skeleton battles just wave after wave of different skeletons. It ends with like a, a skeleton that's gold. Like a golden skeleton is your last uh, battle on this sequence. Very, very cool. Very much like the great Sinbad movies I remember growing up. This game does not disappoint. It's a fantastic end battle. I would highly recommend this game. Give it a shot. Time to unleash all my genies. Let's do this. The most acclaimed movie of the year, nominated for seven Academy Awards, including Best Actor, Best Director, Best Screenplay, and Best Picture of the Year. That's a bold statement. Pulp Fiction, rated R, now playing. Knuckle Bash is a Toplin arcade game released in 1993. Although Toplin is mostly known for their epic shooters like Truxton, Zero Wing, and Mbatsugan, they often dabbled in other genres. Knuckle Bash was their first attempt at a beat-em-up that plays like a slower version of Final Fight. The story of Knuckle Bash involves a group of heroic professional wrestlers going off to quit their jobs so they can fight a gang called the Bulls. The Bulls have a we are a weird bunch consisting of everything from a male stripper to ninjas to American football players. Their leader is a freakish fat man that wears a filet pig head as a mask. I kid you not. One of the highlights of this game is even going to a football game to beat up a football player only to find a secret trap door under the football stadium with a dungeon underneath it. At one point you fight the ancient demon in the forest only to reveal himself as your manager wearing a mask. Needless to say, Knuckle Bash does not take itself too seriously. Before choosing your characters, you get two places to start. Off to destroy the bull group or a fierce battle of the four mad bulls. None of them actually mean anything except for which stages you accomplish first because all the stages must be completed before moving on to the end game. Defeating either of these missions unlocks you a new character. So as you play this game, you get more and more characters that you can play as. One of my favorite parts in the game is you have a face punch battle where you rapidly press the button and the loser gets punched directly in the face. This is a really fun mechanic when you're playing the game online. This gameplay footage was caught live playing the iArcade online. Knuckle Bash is an online enabled game on the iArcade. One of my favorite characters is Flash. Flash is an Elvis impersonator and one of the coolest characters in the game. While other beat em ups have you fighting Elvis, this game you actually get to play as one. All I gotta say is rock and roll. 
here to stay, taking care of business. Devo, the character wearing the blue pants, is the fastest initial character, and he looks an awful lot like Street Fighter's Guile, or Dolph Lundgren. He also has the least interesting character in the game. The special attack has him lifting an enemy up and juggling them around like a clown. This has a medium range and can damage other enemies. The creative character designs and kind of goofy story make this game an absolute gem of a classic arcade game that most people have never heard about. If you haven't played this beat em up, I would highly recommend you give it a shot. And as another great plus, this is one of the games that we can play right now online on iArcade. With another face punch battle. Who is gonna win? Papa Brad or Chris? It's gonna be a close one. Let's find out. IRK, bring more of these beat em ups to us. Online with these games is amazing. We got Chris for the win. Nice job, bud. Here I am playing as Nacho Libre. No, not really. This character's name is Dice, and he's a me Mexican luchador and the strongest of the initial characters. He is somewhat slow to play as a character, but his special attack is amazing. He will grab an enemy and spin them around until they catch fire, hitting enemies in the process. Characters are like this as part of the magic that makes this game so unique. Here we face off against the ninja, Mr. Hayate. He's a very tough ninja that wears a leather mask. He excels in both speed and power, but he gets knocked around easily. His flying kick looks cool, and his special move has him spinning around until he becomes a tornado. One of the great things in this game is once you defeat a boss, you gain the ability to play as that character. So your, your players that you can play as expand as you move through the levels of the game. That plus the great art and the fun gameplay makes this a win in my book. If you are a fan of professional wrestling, this game has wrestling Easter eggs throughout it. Just a great game with a really fun style. One of my favorite bosses is a hulking American football player that you fight in the middle of a trapped stadium. He excels in strength and stamina, but he's unfortunately very slow. The football player has the most abusable special attack in the game when he slams his fist in the group and makes shock waves, just like the Incredible Hulk. His shock waves heavily damage all the enemies on the screen. Knuckle Bash never received a port to home consoles. The arcade version was published by Atari Games in North America. This is the definition of a hidden gem. This is a game that I had never played that I played for the first time on iArcade. I have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed this game and I would highly recommend this game as a must have if you like the beat em up genre. Add to that the excellent online play that this game offers, and I'd have to say, I'm gonna rate this game super high. I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10 on my approval scale.
Hey kids, Poppin' Pins Bowling isn't just for ninjas. Oh no, I split. Ha, beat that. Dude, you really got your shell against the wall. Strike! Look at that action! Poppin' Pins Bowling, part of the Team Turtle Collection. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Subterranean Sewer Hockey. Master the ninja skill of getting the pizza to go into the sewer. Awesome! Comes with 12 Ninja Turtle players, a higher form of turtle power. This is Papa Brad, and today we're going to take a look at the Combat Tribes, a Technos Japan arcade game released in 1990, available on the iArcade for only $9.99. First thing I can say about this game, this is a game you want to play with a friend, as in all great beat-em-ups, they're meant to be played co-op. So today I have my grandson Carson joining me for a complete run-through of the Combat Tribes. You can pick between three different characters in Combat Tribes, Berserker, Belova, or Blitz. Berserker is a vigilante. He has blonde, spiky mullet hairdo. Also wears the blue outfit. He's kind of a good all-around character. He has speed and strength. The middle character, Belova, which is named after an Indian battle axe. He is the strongest of the three characters, but of course with strength comes a lack of speed. He's kind of sluggish. The third character, Blitz, short for Blitzkrieg, has a brown long ponytail hairdo and a brown out and a red outfit. He's the most agile but lacks the strength of the other two characters. So you have basically Berserker is a balanced character with both speed and strength. Belova is a strength-based character that's stronger but slower. And Blitz is a character that has the most speed but lacks the strength of the other two characters. It's a good balance uh, between the three different characters in this game. Here we go, and we're taking on the Stadium Barbarians. One of the great things of this game is that um, it has a lot of variation on where you fight, the kind of enemies that you fight. And you gotta remember, this is from, you know, 1990, so it is pretty retro. Still a ton of fun um, overall. I, I love this game. Um, my grandson Carson, this was his first time playing, I asked him his opinion of the game. Uh, he is a big fan of the Double Dragon series, and he's played all the Double Dragon games with me all the way through. And he rates this one right after the original Double Dragon, so this is his second favorite. Which is, uh, which is pretty big, because Double Dragon was a game that really introduced him to beat-em-ups. And I think, you know, this is truly a great follow-up. Um, if you're looking at for a great retro beat-em-up game, you can't go wrong with Combat Tribes. I like that they have a bunch of different bosses. This one's pretty crazy with this giant tomahawk. Oh wow, we're up to Act 4. We're rocking it. Get a little fist pound before we begin. Now we're going to take on the uh, military enemies in the game. This boss was cool. He's like half man, half machine, just like a cyborg. At one point a gun comes out of his chest. It's pretty cool. Of course the big bad boss flies away in a helicopter and you're left to fight this guy on the rooftop. Typical action movie. Huge shout out to Retro Oblivion, who did an awesome review on this game that uh, we got to run on the iArcadian show. Thanks a lot. Inspired me to play the game all the way through with my grandson. And I know he had the time of his life playing through this game with Papa Rad. Look at that gun that comes out of his chest. How cool is that? How can you not love this game? Playing the game on IRK with the Sanwa controls and buttons also makes it a just a seamless experience. Emulation's good, the gameplay's good. Final battle. Game ends with a, a final boss rush where you have to uh, fight against all the previous gangs while tracing the uh, big boss across the harbor. 
after you, each time you defeat one gang, you have to fight the next gang, and all the bosses are there to be beaten again. This is a typical uh, beat 'em up mechanic that was popular at the time this game came out. So you get one more chance to see all the cool character designs. Then on to the final battle. And then you're in for a real treat in this game. Okay, it looks like we're gonna fight the crime boss. What? Are you kidding me? And yes, that just happened. The crime boss is killed by a female cyborg, Martha Splatterhead. You fight Martha in the final battle. If two or three players are playing the game, you get additional clones, depending on how many players are playing. So you see we're playing two players, so we get two Marthas to battle. Um, all Marthas must be defeated to beat this game. I mean, come on. I'm not making this up. Martha Splatterhead is this character's name. How cool is that? That almost makes Combat Tribes a must-buy. There you go. Victory is ours. We have beaten Combat Tribes. This has been Papa Brad reminding you to stay legit. Take the time to play a beat-em-up game with a loved one. If you like iArcade content, be sure to check out all my other reviews on my channel. And be sure to like and subscribe Papa Brad's Gaming and the iArcadians. We also have a Facebook page for the iArcadians show.
awesome. <laughs>